Scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Good morning. It is good to be here. It is good to worship God together. In fact, I was thinking about the, it's been a while since the last time I stood before you. In fact, uh, after that, the whole world shut down for a few months, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. As we live in a crazy world, in fact, uh, we're living in a world with individuals who are truly suffering from an identity crisis. They do not know who they are. They don't know or don't understand who they are. They don't know what defines them. And they look for various things in this world to define who they are, whether it's uh, attributes or whether it's uh, people or uh, or those types of things. Uh, they, They try to be known for something. We see in our scripture reading, Paul wanted to be known as a servant of Christ and a steward of the mysteries of God. When we look at the church in Corinth, they suffered from an identity crisis as well. And what was the result of that? When we look at the result of why, what happened, in, it, it was division. There was divisions among them. If you turn over to chapter 1, in verse, uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 11... Paul said this, For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say that each of you say, I am of Paul, or I am of Paulus, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? We, we look at this, uh, Paul was, was identifying, to, or, or letting them know that they were identifying themselves by the wrong identity. They were identifying those of who taught them. And we, we see what happened. There was divisions among them. There was contentions. And Paul said in verse 10, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. We look at this scripture and we need to understand that this is the way we should be. We should be of the same mind. We should speak the same things and we should be perfectly joined together in the same judgment. When we look at this scripture, we need to understand who we should identify with. Not have the wrong identity like the church in Corinth. Paul corrected them, their error in pointing them to Christ. You see, not only did they have the wrong identity, but they had the wrong persuasion. The church may have identified as the world tends to do by attaching their beliefs to whom they were persuaded by. Paul was not like the Greek philosophers of his day or that had persuasive speech or was a smooth talker, although I feel that he was definitely one who, who did persuade men. We see Paul taught a simple message, Joe, that is Jesus Christ and him crucified. He pointed them to Christ. They had the wrong persuasion where they were going after these men and following after them. And, and yeah, the, the, it is important to be led to the truth of the gospel, but the one who was leading was just a man. And oftentimes we see this in scriptures, especially with the apostles. They, they were going around preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But what ended up happening? Look at Peter in Acts chapter 10 and verse 25 where he first met Cornelius. And Cornelius, what did he do? He fell at the feet of Peter and worshipped him. 
But Peter raised him up saying, Stand up, I am just a man. And we notice the same thing in Acts chapter 14, verses 11 through 15. When, when Paul healed the lame man, the people saw, they saw what happened and had it raised their voice saying in the uh, Laconian language, the gods have come down in the likeness of men. You see, they were attaching things and what ended up happening, they also called Barnabas Zeus and, and, and Paul uh, uh, Hermaeus and, and they were uh, relating their worldly gods to these men. In fact, they began to offer sacrifices to them. And I want us to look at uh, Acts chapter 14 and verse, uh, verses four, uh, four, Acts 14 verse 14. It said, now when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this, they tore their clothes, they ran to, among the multitude, crying out, saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you, and preach to you, uh, and that you should turn from these useless things to the living God, who made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that are in them. Whenever uh, it's important to be led to the truth of the gospel, but but not to do the things of which they were doing. These men were worshiping uh, their, their, their foreign gods, not the true and the living God. But Paul wanted them to know that we are of the same nature. We are identifying uh, ourselves by what we preach and what we uh, bring forth, and that message is from God. And, and he wanted them to turn to God. These men were teaching many people, and they didn't want the attention. Uh, uh, it was God working through them. And it was a time of the miraculous uh, gift of the Holy Spirit where they were able to heal people. They were able to do miraculous things. But that was to confirm the message that was from God. And we see what they were, in, were doing or not taking credit for this. They were pointing people to Christ. They were pointing people to God. The true persuasion, the, the almighty God, the all-knowing God, the all-wise God. We see not only did they have the wrong, uh, the wrong identity or the wrong uh, uh, persuasion, but they had the wrong wisdom. They were looking at the wisdom of this world and they were looking at the wisdom of men when they should have been looking at the wisdom of God. Well, Paul directed them to the wisdom of God in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 27. He said, But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Uh, and, and we look at this and, and understand this. The, 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 those people that you think are wise in this world, those people that you think are mighty in this world, the wisdom of God puts them to shame. In fact, the, the, uh, uh, it goes on to say, In the base things of the world and, and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. As it is written, he who glorifies, let him glory in the Lord. When we look at what, what God has done for us through his wisdom, through his uh, uh, divine wisdom, he has brought us to be in Christ. And that is by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ, believing in Jesus, uh, confessing him, repenting of our sins, and being baptized for the remission of our sins. That we are in Christ Jesus, and he, he became for us the wisdom of God passed down. You see, the, oftentimes we identify by this, uh, this wrong wisdom, but we need to seek the wisdom of God. We, we look at this in the wisdom of God. He brought, brought forth Jesus. And what is that? A righteousness. How to live right. How to be uh, sanctification. It's, it's for us to be set apart from this world. Set apart for a different uh, for God, really. And he brought us forth through redemption. And we glorify in maybe things of this world, and we look at there should be only one thing that we glorify in the Lord.
We, we look, not only did they have the, the wrong identity, the wrong uh, persuasion, the wrong wisdom, they had the wrong foundation. Uh, men often look to worldly things to put their foundation on. And, 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 and that is troublesome. We, we tend to do that as Christians. We, we know that Jesus Christ is our foundation. We know that, but, but we seek after worldly things. We seek after these the, the things in the world, and we say, that's who defines me. And we need to be careful of that. We need to ha- make sure that our foundation is true. Make sure that our foundation is only found in Jesus Christ. As we established already, Paul and Apollos oh, Paul were just mere men. And they were, in fact, Paul states it in this way in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He said, Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one. He said, you know, you, you are identifying by us. You are, are identifying yourself. And we don't know what they were identifying them as uh, they, when they were, there was contentions among them. We, we don't know if, uh, what those contentions were. It's not revealed, but we do, do know that they, they caused division. And we need to be careful of that. Now, what did he say about himself and Apollos and, and the other apostles? That we're just men of whom you believe. And, and, and it's interesting, Paul illustrates this to go on. He said, I planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. We often use this as we preach and teach in evangelism to say, we each need to do our part. One has to plant, another one has to, uh, has to uh, a water like Apollos did. And we see, but God is the one who gives the increase. He's the one that, that provides. Now, I want us to look at verse 8. Verse 8 here says, now he who plants and he who waters are one. You, you see, we each have our part and we each have a responsibility to, to do the work of, of uh, leading people to Christ. We each have that, and it goes on to say, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. But when we look at this, it only works if we are unified together. Unified by the simple message of Jesus Christ. The, and, and we need to make sure that our foundation, as it says in verse 11, uh, for no other foundation can one lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. We see that oftentimes there are worldly wisdom that produces worldly foundations. But God's wisdom put Jesus Christ as the only sure foundation that we can stand on. We look at the, the world, the, the craziness of it, and the things that is going on in our time, in prior times, even in the future. There is only one sure foundation, and that is Jesus Christ. Being found in Him, being right with Him. We look at what Paul said in, in chapter 4 in our scripture reading this morning, verses 1 through 5. We see, let a man so consider us. You see, he wanted the people to look at him, to view him, to understand who Peter or Paul was, and who Peter was, and who all the other apostles were. And I think that's the, uh, the uh, let a man so consider us, the us as the apostles, those teachers, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. You see, uh, Paul desired for him to be viewed in that way, just a servant of Christ. You know, look at all of Paul's earthly prestige. We can look at uh, Philippians chapter 3, and I'll just summarize it, verse 4 through 11. Uh, in some of his earthly prestige was, he was circumcised on the eighth day. He was of the stock of Israel. He is from the tribe of Benjamin. He's a Hebrew of Hebrews. He, he, he was a Pharisee concerning the law. And look at zeal. He, he persecuted the church concerning righteousness of the law blameless. You see, these, this is his earthly prestige. This is what he, he once thought of, of something uh, great about himself. But what did he go on to say? I count it all but loss. I, I count it as, as rubbish I, 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 if I'm not in Christ Jesus. 
You see, Christ Jesus, that foundation that, that I'm putting my hope and trust in is Jesus Christ. And I count everything. It's, I count my heritage. I count my, my, my family, my, my nation uh, that I live in, the, 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 uh, everything. I count it for loss if I'm not found in Jesus Christ. We tend to also uh, attach things to our name. And the things we follow after. But all Paul wanted to be known for as a servant of Christ. And if we think about this, if that was the only thing to return to, uh, uh, refer to you, is that enough? You know, uh, as you know, I, I, people know who I am in some ways. Uh, I referred to myself growing up as I was an athlete. And, and I did played this sport and that sport. And, and when I went to college and I wanted to be known for an accountant. And, and, you know, and I could look at these earthly prestiges, these things that I have accomplished in my life. And I could look at that as pride. But I need to remember that there is only one sure foundation, and that is Jesus Christ. And all I should want and desire to do is to serve Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. All the other earthly references are nice, but the only thing that matters is to be called Christ's servant. I want to look at some uh, scriptures that talk about servitude. If you turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8 and verse 34. We can look to Christ and how he viewed the service to him. He called his people together to himself and also his disciples. And he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. This is Jesus looking at these people and, and, and saying, you want to come after me? You, want to, you, you have a desire to follow me? Deny yourself. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. We look at this denying yourself and we need to understand that, that it is everything about our life we need to deny. That, that this, this individual that I once was, I'm going to deny that and I am going to be a servant of Christ. And that is the most important thing. And he said, and follow me. Follow me. As we look at this, we need to understand what it truly means to be a disciple, a servant of Christ. Turn over a few chapters in Mark chapter 10, verses 42, 42 through 45. Jesus called them to himself and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall be not so among you, but whoever desires to become great, you shall be your servant. And whoever, you sh whoever of you desires to be first, be slaves of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. When we look at the, the Gentiles, and they had this authority, and they had this, and what did they do? They, they lorded it over them. And, and they wanted to be known as great. And, and, but Jesus says to them, he says to his disciples, you want that? You want to be great? Serve. Be a servant of me. You want to be first among you? Be a slave to all. Think about the, the ramifications of what Jesus is saying here. Think about how he is, is telling them that I want you to be a servant like this. I don't want you going out to get a big name or this or that, but I want you to serve. And I want you to be a slave to all. You want this greatness? Serve. Serve everybody. Be a slave to all. That's the message of servitude that Jesus is preaching and teaching. Paul understood this. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21. He said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. We look at the, his life. The way he looked at his life was this. I'm going to live my life and I'm going to live it for Christ. And if I die, guess what? I get to go be with Christ. And the life I'm going to live here, I'm going to live my life for Christ.
He goes in Galatians 2 and verse 20, he said, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You look at what Jesus did on the cross in, in the service that, that he wants us to, to have. Paul said, I crucify. I've crucified. I'm crucified with Christ. And what he's saying is my life, everything that I had, and my earthly prestige, everything, I'm crucifying that with Christ on the cross. And I'm going to live my life for Jesus we know that we have to continue on after we become a Christian. And we know that we, we just can't go on to eternity to be with God forever. But we have to make that commitment to follow Jesus and to live it every day of our lives. In faith to God. Why? Because he loved us. And he gave himself for each and every one of us. We look not also we look also at what Paul said two things he said he wanted to be uh, considered a servant of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God when we look at a steward stewards is one to manage or or look after or responsible for he he was one who was a steward of the mysteries of God now I think it's important for us to understand what this was the mysteries of God oftentimes people say that that uh, the mysteries of God we just don't understand what God wants and God has revealed to us uh, uh, what what God really wants of us but that's that might have been the case a long time ago we we understand that since the beginning in fact before the foundation of the world God had his plan to bring forth redemption why because man sinned we see that in Genesis 3 15 right after the first sin we see that that God's uh, mysteries that God's way was going to be brought down through mankind now we have an advantage we have an advantage because we can look at all at the, that as all in the past. We see the whole mysteries of God played out uh, in, until we have the written word of God. And we can look back and read and study the history of all that. And it isn't a mystery today. It is revealed. It is all revealed to us. At this time, that Paul was one who was a steward of the mysteries of God. And, and it re required something of him to be found faithful. We, we look at what Paul was doing. He, he could have spoke those things that were contrary to God's will, uh, it, but yet he was one who was stewards of the mysteries of God. He, he was said, it is required in the stewards of one be found faithful. Uh, he said, but with me is very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know nothing against myself, yet I am justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. When we look at him being a steward of the mysteries of God, we understand that he came and preached Jesus Christ and him crucified. That God is going to judge him based on the things in which he preaches and teaches. And that God is going to be the one who, who examine him, him based on what he, uh, he preaches and teaches. We also see uh, it is God's revelation in chapter 2 really deals with this that Jesus that Paul preached Jesus Christ and him crucified and we see the that that is seen in natural revelation it's also seen in special revelation uh, the message of God that was brought to uh, Christ and Christ taught his disciples and and the Holy Spirit was going to bring them into remembrance all of this is to get to the point that God's will is going to be done God's will is going to be revealed to us so that we can be faithful servants of God, of Christ. And we look at this, uh, that there were some people at this time that weren't found trustworthy or found faithful uh, in bringing forth the message of God. And in fact, Jesus dealt with, that, dealt with that in his life. In Matthew chapter 7, uh, let's just go ahead and turn there. Matthew chapter 7, Verses 15 through 23, he said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves, who know 
You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but every bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you'll know them. We look at this and we see that there are those that are non-trustworthy stewards of God. They're false teachers. Whether they do it by the nature of, of trying to trick those or trying to persuade those, having the wrong persuasion, the wrong foundation, those types of things, or maybe it's just by they, they don't know the truth. That's why we need to be faithful stewards of God's word to make sure we know the truth. And we're not persuaded by individuals who are trying to lead us away from God, but ones that are try, truly trying to lead you to God. Jesus dealt with this by saying, beware. Beware of these people. We need to be careful. There are some that were found not trustworthy. In fact, Jesus goes on to say in Matthew 7, in verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I'll declare to him, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. When we look at what Jesus was saying, that there are false prophets, there are ones that are not following God's will. In fact, they they may be calling and may have done things in in Jesus' name or or followed, but, but he said to them, why do you do these things? But don't follow me. It, you know, why do you uh, call, uh, prophesy and do the, these types of things, but yet you're not doing it in the right manner? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I've said? And we see here that, that he said, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. This is, we have to be careful of, of non-trustworthy stewards of God. And we also see Paul warning Timothy in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1 and verse 5. He said, now the, the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith. We look at this. Why was he telling Timothy? Yeah, we know that he was encouraging and building him up to do the work of the evangelist. He said, for, for which some having strayed have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers the law, understanding neither what they, they say nor what the things which they affirm. But we do know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Knowing this, the law is not made for profane, for murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for uh, sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers. If there is anything other thing contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which is which was committed to my trust, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. We look at what Paul was trying to train Timothy to say that that you need to have a pure heart. You need to have a good conscience and a sincere faith, but you have to have the right foundation, and that is Jesus Christ. There are many things here that are mentioned that that are just a, a, a departure from God. And he warned them, and, and he warned them to be faithful. And just as Paul was thankful that, that, that God has put him uh, it, uh, as a minister, uh, and he counted him faithful. You see, Paul was confident in his belief. Paul was not going to be swayed of the court of, of public opinions or the human courts. He figured it was a small thing. Man's opinions were not going to concern him. He knew that his message was from God. He knew that what he was teaching and preaching was from God. And in fact, he wouldn't even examine himself. We, we look at, we have to be careful. Now, he said that, but we need to also understand that, that he didn't examine himself because he knew. 
uh, and he knew that it wasn't justification, though. He knew that just because he said that, that I don't examine myself and I'm not from God, he knew that, that that wasn't justification, but he knew that his message was from God, and God himself will judge him. And uh, tonight we're going to look at judgment more, in, but I want to do men mention of a few things. Uh, the, he said, the Lord examines me. Do not go on passing judgment. He will judge me when he comes. And, and he also said, it gets to this point, that in, and we can understand that man's judgments uh, is far less than God's judgment. So we look at the application for us today. Uh, Paul wanted to be known as a servant of Christ and a steward of the mysteries of God. We have to deal with uh, uh, certain things. We have to deal with the wrong identity. Uh, we need to make sure, first and foremost, that we as Christians are identifying ourselves as servants of Christ. And in doing that, we must be uh, like the Bereans and making sure that we are following the truth of Jesus Christ. The Bereans, they, they, they heard the message and they, they, sought, they sought out Scripture to, to make sure that this is so. And we need to make sure when we're looking at the identifying ourselves in this world today that we are just servants of Christ. There are a lot of earthly connections that we can attach to ourselves, but the only thing that matters, the only thing that we need to be known for is being a servant of Christ. That means that all earthly ties are secondary to what uh, and, and should not interfere with our service to our Lord. This means we follow after the teachings and instructions of Jesus Christ. We need to make sure that we do not have the wrong identity, that we are only serving our Lord and we are in service for Him. We also need to make sure that we don't have uh, the wrong persuasions in, in making sure that we are only persuaded in the truth. We are found uh, trustworthy stewards of God's word. Whenever we look at this, uh, at one point uh, Paul made mention the stewards of the mysteries of God. We too are stewards, not the mysteries of God, but the revealed word of God. We need to be found trustworthy uh, stewards of God's word, making sure that we are studying the scriptures, understanding what God's will is, what God's word says, so that we can be faithful to God. And whenever we look at dealing with the wrong wisdom, we need to not look to human wisdom. We need to not look to human courts. But we need to look to God's wisdom and God's judgment. You see, when we look uh, right now, the only thing that we do not have revealed to us from God is when He's coming back again. We know it will be done someday. We know that there will be a time that it comes... Jesus even said, no man, uh, not even himself, knew the hour in which uh, the day or the hour. But when we look at this, we need to make sure that we're not looking to earthly wisdom and attaching ourselves to that, knowing that we will have to be true stewards of God's word, making sure we apply it to our life, know it. As Ezra talks about, he, he learned it, he applied it to his life, and he went out and taught Israel all, of, all these things. We need to make sure that we have the right wisdom, and that is God's wisdom. We also need to deal with dealing with the wrong foundation. We seek only the true foundation, which is in Jesus Christ. That true foundation, when we look at this, is, is, is upon Jesus Christ, building up from that. You know, oftentimes uh, uh, there are a lot of um, worldly things that build their foundations. And, and whenever you look at a structure and you look at the structure of how you build on it, it's one on top of another and you build upward. Oftentimes some build outward as well, taking off the foundation. And then we look at Jesus Christ, sometimes that happens. People uh, base their, their beliefs on Jesus Christ, but they build not upward the, according to the gospel and towards the, the wisdom of God, but they build outward, meaning that they, they go off the foundation a little bit. You know, maybe it's by, hey, I'm going to believe this. I know Christ said that, but I'm going to go a little farther to the right or a little farther to the left. And we need to be careful that our foundation is just 
upward from the true foundation, which is in Jesus Christ. We need to make sure our foundation is, is, is on the true foundation of Jesus Christ. If our foundation is on anything other than Jesus Christ, then our foundation is on sand. And we know what happens when the storm blows in. So what happens when we don't understand who we are? Division occurs. We, we get influenced in so many things, and each of us have been influenced in so many ways in this world. We need to be careful that we don't have the wrong identity, the wrong persuasion, the wrong wisdom, or the wrong foundation. As individuals of the body of Christ, we need to be aware ensure that we don't suffer from this identity crisis, that we are just followers of Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this morning, if you're here and you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, you've never been obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ, you don't, whether you believe in him or not, you, you haven't committed your life to him in service, believe in Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins, confess that he is the Son of God, and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Or maybe you're here this morning and you haven't identified correctly the way you should have. You've gone your separate ways from, from the true foundation. Come back. Come back to God. If we can help you get your life right this morning, please come forward as we stand and as we sing. Live for Jesus, so my brother, his disciple ever be. Render not to any other what alone the Lord should be. Live for Jesus, live for Jesus.